This is the Photography Is My Passion podcast, episode 16, Selling Stock Photography. Okay, on this episode of the Photography Is My Passion podcast, as you could see, we're on our computer. And that's because I received a lot of requests from people that are interested in stock photography. So I thought for this episode, we're going to take a look at some different stock photo agencies, some of the requirements and what you need to do to sell your images to them and how much money you would make. Now we're going to look at four different um, micro stock agencies or stock photography agencies. Now there's a zillion out there. We're just I just picked four that seem to be the more popular choices. One I'm not looking at is Adobe Stock. Um, the reason why is I'm going to do a video all by itself on Adobe Stock because I do all those Lightroom videos. So I'm going to do a Lightroom video on Adobe Stock in the near future. In this video, we're going to take a look at Dreamstime, iStock, Shutterstock, and Alamy. Now, we're going to start out with Dreamstime, and I'll have links for these uh, agencies below and also I should probably mention uh, currently I'm not selling any stock photography I'm not really interested in doing it I did in the past I mentioned that many times um, I do a lot of workshops and I'm around photographers all the time and you know professional photographers so I, I got pretty much a grip on what's required for these sites and hopefully I could pass some of my knowledge on to you now, we're going to take a look at Dreamstime first, and as we look at this page here, they're telling you exactly how to sell photos, images, and videos with uh, Dreamstime. So, as you look through, the main thing I guess most of us are concerned about is how much do we get paid? Well, a couple things that these stock agencies will do, they'll pay you a little more if you're exclusive to them. Uh, there's two different ways I guess they, at least some of these places, consider exclusive. They think that if an image is only on their site and no other site, that's an exclusive image, of course. The other thing, though, and they might pay you a little more, is if you're, all your images are on their site, meaning you as a photographer aren't on any other sites. So you have all your images on this one site. They might pay you even a little more, and we'll talk about that a little more specifically uh, when we get to the site that might do that, or sites that might do that. Now, as far as Dreams Time is concerned, they have a thing where the more your image sells, the more money you'll make. Now, as we look here, when you upload what it says up in here, when you upload your images to them, they're right away going to start out as level one images, and they're going to stay there for six months. And if you don't have a specific number of stay, uh, sales, they'll stay at level one. And as you can see, they go by size of image. An extra small image, if it's a non-exclusive image, that means you have it on Dreamstime and at least one other site, you'd make a dollar two. If it's an exclusive image, you'll make a dollar twelve. Now, if you're an exclusive user, meaning only your images are on Dreamstime and you don't have them anywhere else, and this image isn't anywhere else but Dreamstime, you'll make $2.45. So you can see you make considerably more by being an exclusive user. Now, from most people I've talked to, they think that it's better that you don't do any of this exclusivity things, meaning you're much better off having your images on multiple sites and accept the lower fees because you'll still make up for it or you will make up for it in more sales because some people might only use dreams time and somebody might only use Alamy and somebody might only use you know iStock photo for their image needs and if you have all your images only on dreams time and none of those other ones those people that only use let's say iStock photo will never see your images so uh, like I mentioned it's really you know, a personal choice of how you want to go about doing it. Maybe it's just for time purposes, you only could deal with one stock agency, then definitely sign up as an exclusive user. If exclusive user is available, definitely exclusive image, which is available on most of the sites. Now, most people, from what I'm understanding, they, the images sell usually a medium, large or extra large, usually the sales. So you could see for 
uh, level one, that's an image that's been on there uh, six months or less, and or has zero downloads, you're going to make between $2.38 and $3.06. So it's not, I mean, terribly bad. Now, to move up to level two, you just have to sell the image once. And then you'll make a little more. Uh, let's use the large image as our uh, comparison. With level one, a large image is $2.72. As soon as you sell it once, each subsequent sale up to four is $4.49. Over four downloads, you'll jump up to six nineteen. Ten to twenty-four downloads, you'll jump up to eight sixteen on that large image. And finally, on level five for that large image, you'll make ten dollars and forty cents. So that's that's pretty good. So this you can see how this will really um, escalate as you your image gets more popular. You sell more of that specific image, you'll really make some uh, additional money. So that, in my opinion, I, I kind of like this. Now level level zero, I'm not really sure what that story is there, and I saw no reference of it here. I'm sure it's there, but going through all these different sites, I didn't have time to really see what level zero is. But it does say up here, it says, when approved, your file be included in the database as a one level file. So that's one level right there. So those are the, um, the royalties that you will make from that. Now there are extended licenses available for people that want to uh, use an image for, let's say, um, something more than, I guess, what they consider standard. You'd have to read their licenses to see specifically what they mean. Usually what it means is, um, from my experience, and it could be different for Dreamstime and others, I didn't look for specifically what Dreamstime says, but usually if it's like uh, going to be on a website and it's going to be, uh, the page is going to be viewed 250,000 times or less, a standard license will work. If anything more than that, they're going to need it uh, to, to buy an extended license. Or let's say it's going to be on a book cover and the book cover is going to sell more than 250,000 copies or something like that. You could look for more specifics about these extended licenses. Of course, if your image is sold with an extended license, you'll make considerably more money. So that's some of the money you'll make from Dreams Time. The next thing we're going to t talk to is, is they have specific pages and all these sites do to really help you um assist you sell your images to get them up there so they get accepted and so you could make sales and on this page here they're talking about reasons for refusals why they refuse an image because when you upload your images to these sites they take a look at them they look for technical quality as well as aesthetic quality and usually the image will get rejected if it is rejected for a technical issue and they talk about distorted pixels, lens problems, this most commonly, tell you the truth, is a cheap lens. And so you'd really, you know, they want high quality images, of course. And um, so, you know, lens fringing, and they go and they explain it all right here. And we won't get into too much details here since we have so many different sites to go over. But I will have links to this so you could take a look. And again, there's noise. Um, from people I've talked to, noise is, seems to be the number one image or number one reason why images are rejected. So you really need some uh, good noise reduction software uh, to, you know, really make sure that you're not losing uh, sales or losing chances for sales because of noise. Also low light, I mean, they really want images to have detail everywhere unless you're doing a specific silhouette that is really aesthetically pleasing, um, then usually the image would get rejected. You could see they're using um, an example of this sail ship here. Um, the photographer maybe thought it was a cool silhouette, but it, it's going to get rejected because it, it, it doesn't show any uh, detail in the uh, boat area at all. Now, I guess a different one, maybe if you had a sun and um, maybe high grasses, and a person standing at the top of the hill with their arms up in a V, and they were silhouetted, but other things in the shot weren't silhouetted, that might be more aesthetically pleasing, and they might accept something like that. But be warned that you're going to risk having a rejection because of these silhouettes. So you want to make sure that you have, if possible, detail in the black areas. And uh, the other end of the spectrum 
overexposure, no detail in these bright areas. You've got to uh, look for that. Incorrect light setup if you're doing things in the studio, the shadows here, totally unacceptable, things like that. So you have to be very careful. And again, go through, you know, there's white balance. I mean, this is like photography 101, out of focus, things like that. You have to make sure that the images are, are you know, just tip top, you know, excellent shots, uh, perfectly composed, perfectly, perfectly exposed, and perfectly processed. You can see here over filtered, you know, that wouldn't be acceptable. You got to remember a lot of times people download these images, they might download one of these, um, one of these uh, extra large sizes here, maximum size, because they want to blow it up on a billboard or something like that. And if your image has any of these issues, it's just going to be unusable to them. So you have to make sure that you have these technically, uh, I guess, perfect, perfect uh, images. So that is the problems they have. Now, they have a link uh, so you could look at their best selling images. And this will give you an idea on Dreams Time what their best selling images are. And you could see they're, they're super high quality images, but there's nothing here that most photographers can't do, uh, in my opinion. Uh, like, I have, personally, I have a shot almost identical to that. Um, here's the same shot in color, like that. So you can see there's nothing, I guess, I mean, they're great shots. I'm not going to like shortchange any of this. They're fantastic shots. But if you really study your craft and you're a good photographer, anyone could do this. Like look at this um, pile of mixed nuts. If you have um, studio lighting available, even some good flashes, uh, you know, uh, on camera, you know, type flashes that you could take off camera, um, soft boxes, things like that. I mean, anyone could do that. So, um, you know, stuff like that. So you look at their best selling images, it gives you an idea of what you might already have in your library that you could submit or something that you could easily uh, capture. Now, after Dreams Time, we'll go over to look at iStock. iStock uh, Photo is a division of Getty Images. Getty Images, of course, is a lot of famous photographers supply their images to Getty Images. And selling stock, three easy steps. First, you got to join the community, meaning you got to sign up with iStock Photo. Then you got to apply to be a contributor. They accept photos, illustrations, and video. And then you submit samples of your work. Um, so you're going to upload three images for them, and they're going to look and see if they're any good, really. And uh, from there, you could see how, um, you know, iStock works, you know, once you're accepted. Uh, how they pay you. Now, most of these places will either send you a bank transfer, they could send paper checks or PayPal. Um, usually stuff like that. I use PayPal. It's up to you, though. Um, now... Again, this is similar to Dreams Time. The more you sell, the more you make. Um, they call it canister levels. Base one is between one and 249 downloads. You make a specific amount of money. Bronze is 250 to 24.99, and so on. They call it uh, canisters. Now, there's um, the royalty schedule. I think I wanted to look at um, as people. They work on credits, and so when people buy things, they spend credits, and you uh, uh, attain these credits. And you, as you get credits, um, you make you know a specific type of royalty. The default is 15%. So they sell an image for $10, you'll make $1.50. Um, they go up the more redeemed credits you get. So in my mind this is a little more difficult to follow than what dreams time was it was a little more specific you made exactly specific amount of money um and you went up to specific amounts of money but you could see it's a little different here and you could look through uh, more specifically with iStock. now what they're looking for i talked about this before is You'll increase your chances of sales if you send a stock agency things they need. They need corporate shops. And this is 
that had been going on forever. Even when I was selling stock images back in the days when I had to mail slides in to the place in New York City that I was working with. They always need corporate shots. Um, the many sides of a modern business is what it's saying. They just really need people, um, both men and women in professional situations doing professional business things, for lack of a better way to put it. Um, concepts and visual metaphors go beyond the literal and help a designer explain something in a way. Food and beverages, um, people, <laughs> I mean, are always Instagramming their food, but if you could do that in a professional way, um, especially cuisines around the globe. Uh, so you're, you know, in somewhere, you're not just, you know, taking photographs of hamburgers and fries. You're taking interesting images of different types of cuisines. That's what they need. Groups and teams, people working together, uh, you know, all different types of things you could do with that. Uh, holiday and seasonal themes always sell. I know um, back in the day, I just had a simple picture of a Christmas tree with some lights on it that had snow on it. It was out in the yard and that image sold like hotcakes. So simple things like that. Um, Non-business jobs. These are kind of like, uh, you know, people doing things that aren't in business suits. So this could be like an environmental portrait of a mechanic, a garbage man, a, a barista, things like that. Um, now, remember with that said, you always need signed model releases for all these sites. And the sites are really strict, usually about the model release. Um, some of the sites might reject an image, even if you have the back of a person, they're not necessarily recognizable to most of us, they still might want a model release for that. So you could check out more specifically about their model release requirements, which I didn't get into in this presentation. But definitely be conscious of model releases for all these things. So we'll go on. We have, uh, uh, you know, people interacting. Just how the, the one of the mistakes people make with stock photography is they take these beautiful images, but um, they don't have people interacting in the image. To go back to when I was doing stock images, I took some images of churches and I was taking images of libraries for stock. And the first batch I sent in were of a bunch of libraries and they were like quaint little town libraries and things like that. And the person from the stock agency got back to me and they asked me to have somebody in the image, somebody reading a book on the bench that was just outside the door of the library, somebody walking in or out of the library. They just need that human part added to the, um, to the image. So maybe take the image, let's say you're doing a church and you take the image of the church, you know, beautiful sky, it's got beautiful light, everything's perfect. But then take a second image with a person in there, somebody walking in the church, somebody walking out of the church, uh, somebody in the shot. Of course, again, you're going to need that model release. Remember that. But that really does help sales when you have uh, these people in the shots. Um, so th uh, that goes on with religion and spirituality. We talked about that. Now, sp uh, science and technology, accurate uh, depictions of the cutting edge of the human knowledge. Um, those of you, maybe you work in a profession that you could take advantage of this. Um, I worked in engineering for a long time, um, you know, in my second life and, you know, easy to get images of, you know, people doing engineering type things. So stuff like that, social issues, um, you know, issues today that impact us and sports. And then just as important, maybe more important is images that I stock does not need. Now, I'd probably say, you know, this is an iStock page, but a lot of this stuff is for all these agencies. You could look at this and say, well, um, you know, other agencies are going to be just the same. I mean, pretty much. Um, a lot of this now doesn't have to do with uh, us photographers. There's a lot of like vector things, 3Ds and stuff that they don't want. Uh, airplane wings out of window shots. They don't want, they don't need any flag shots, no light blurs, you know, that artistic stuff with light blurs, cars going down the street, stuff like that. Nature snapshots, that means sweeping vistas and I insect macros are great, yet another forest floor is not. So you have this beautiful sweeping vista, they want it. You have this great insect macro, they want it. 
but if it's just like the forest floor or something like that they they don't need it um photoshop backgrounds i know ba backgrounds are really popular but you know a lot of people sell those you could a lot of photographers sell them a lot of my contemporaries are online right now they teach photography and they also have backgrounds for sale so they don't need them uh people doing nothing you know get your models doing something um shadows of people headless people um again this goes back to making sure that you're technically proficient you really want to you know you're a professional you ha you need to take professional images single apples uh isolated on white um the day of the single fruit isolated in white has passed i mean they bluntly tell you right there sunsets cloudscape skies i know that's going to disappoint many but be sure the sky is really is stunning before uploading i mean it's got to be something all right uh symbols you know there's a lot of uh take pictures of like signs with different symbols and things like that they don't want it um your immediate environment there's light beyond your front door so basically what they're saying they want something different they want something unique uh if possible so uh, take that in mind. Again, this is for iStock Photo, but I mean, these suggestions will be for any of these um, agencies. Trust me, please. The next one we're going to talk about is Shutterstock. They accept video, images, and vectors. And of course, we're going to uh, talk more specifically about images. Um, their earnings breakdown. Now, a lot of these sites, they have different things for people that visit their site or different ways people could purchase images they could just buy an image outright or they could become a monthly subscriber and they get a certain number of downloads every month and you get paid different depending on how the customer is what type of customer it is i should say so if it's a monthly subscriber so they're they're a monthly subscriber to shutterstock they get a certain amount of images to download if your lifetime earnings, now you're just starting out, are less than $500, you'll get a quarter per image, 25 cents. If, and as you can see, we'll go here. If you're 500 to 3,000, you make 33, 3,000 to 10,000, 36 cents an image. And if you're made over $10,000 with Shutterstock, you'll make a whole 38 cents an image. Now, an on-demand image, that means I just went on Shutterstock. I don't want to be a monthly you know, person. I just want to buy the image outright. Um, zero to 500, you make 81 cents, dollar seven, dollar 17, dollar 24 as you go up. Now, an on demand image, now that's for a small or medium image. An on demand image, any size, which is a little confusing, which I believe, um, if you look down here, um, well, it doesn't, it just says Im images, photos, but I believe that means besides small and medium. You make a dollar 88 if you're under $500 in sales. At 248, 270, all the way up to 285 if you've made over $10,000 in sales. Now, they have enhanced license too. Uh, so you'll make, if you're less than $500 and someone buys one of your images with an enhanced license, you can look up what their enhanced license um, actually entails. You'll make 20% of the sale up to 80 bucks. Um, and again, as you go up, you could see them could make all the way up to $120. And this is footage, which we're not really talking about. That's video. You'd make 30% of the sale. So that's the earnings breakdown for Shutterstock. Now, how do you submit photos for review? Uh, upload your content. Then once it's uploaded, you add your metadata, description, keywords. Then you submit it, and they're going to review it. Once they review it, um, they evaluate the uh, images and they approve ones and it goes into your portfolio. So people could now buy it. And they have specific instructions on how to go about uploading images and they talk about property releases, which I didn't mention. A lot of times if you're taking an image of a building that is quite famous or a building that, um, you know, is, I guess, unique in a way or something, the uh, architect will have a copyright or they'll have a property uh, copyright on it, which kind of limits it images of it being sold. So you're going to need a property release. Now that's for buildings, but you also need, if you take a picture of your neighbor's dog, they're going to need a property release because the dog is her property. Um, if you're taking different you know, if you're taking an image of a Jaguar, uh, the car, I should say, or a BMW, 
um, might need a property release on that, if, you know, to legally sell it as a stock image. So you should go through all these uh, different things here and whether or not an image is um, going to be deemed an editorial. Um, that would be something like if you took a picture of the President of the United States and of course you don't have a model release. Um, there's other people in the shots so it's only going to be sold as an editorial image. Um, so things like that. And you could go through here and see some more specific um, requirements about submitting your work for review. Now, technical requirements. Most of these sites, they want the image to be at least four megapixels. They really would prefer it to be much bigger if possible. And the way you could, you know, figure out the megapixels easy is it's just your length times width in pixels. So down here, if you have an image that's 2000 by 2400, that's 4.8 megapixels. So that one's fine. If you have one that's 1200 by 3000, that's 3.6 megapixels, that will get rejected. It's too small. So you're going to need large images. Um, now, even crop sensor cameras will, will be fine as long as you don't crop them too much afterwards in post. Um, you know, you could take a great shot, but when you crop it really quite small, you have to really be aware of what your uh, pixel dimensions are. If it gets too small, you won't be able to submit it. So keep that in mind. Now, there's, they sell supersize images. They're large format. Um, these are uh, images that are more than 15 megapixels. So if you're using a medium format digital camera or even a like a you know, a high density full frame camera, a full frame DSLR, your uh, image will very likely be more than 15 meg megapixels. So it would be eligible for super size. Now that doesn't mean that it's not going to sell a small, medium, or large or anything like that. It's just going to be available. If you send a crop censored image in and it's big enough, it's more than four megapixels, but it's less than 15 megapixels, it just means that that super size would be gray out. grayed out. Someone won't be able to buy that image as a super size image. All right, so that's how to, you know, size requirements for uh, Shutterstock. Now, 19 common newbie submission mistakes. Um, look at your image's full size. Basically, what you're looking is for those things we talked about for dreams time. You're looking for lens distortion and things like that, focus issues. You want to make sure that you're perfectly in focus. Noise, you want to really you know, go in at 100% and look for noise. Um, JPEG compression artifacts, you can see here on this image here, this, this JPEG compression. And in this image, it's fine. So you really want to make sure you eliminate any JPEG uh, compression. If you go too crazy with noise reduction and or sharpening, it tends to get, um, you know, get um, uh, rejected. This one here is too much noise reduction, so it really softened the image totally. This one has too much sharpening. I mean, really bad. So it's got all these artifacts in there. So that's no bad, uh, or that is bad. Uh, chromatic aber aberration. You can see there's sometimes you get these little purple two green little lines, especially especially on vertical things like uh, tree limbs or poles and things like that. Always be aware of that. Steeples, look for chromatic aberration. Um, you have to, it's a little more difficult to get rid of, but it can be uh, removed in, um, in a Lightroom things and, you know, other post-processing uh, packages like Lightroom. Um, edits, you know, maybe this, something was up here and, and uh, photographer edited it out but they didn't do a very good job so you got to be aware of that um, you know here stuff like that that's just not acceptable one thing I should um, mention here as I'm looking at this a lot of times too if a brand name is in the image so you take a picture you're taking a picture of a photographer holding a camera and the camera says Canon on it you have to edit out the Canon it can't be there if you're taking pictures of a couple people playing basketball and they're wearing Nike shoes and they have the Nike swoosh on the side of the shoe. You have to edit that out. Uh, it won't be accepted. And all these will be in the guidelines. You have to carefully read these guidelines, submission guidelines, for all these different sites. 
um, and you really have to painstakingly go through the images and make sure that you're not violating any of these issues or, or committing any of these problems or your image isn't guilty of any of these problems so that your image is more likely to be accepted. Um, irrelevant uh, titles and keywords, uh, that's when you um, title the keyword and, and or title the image when you upload it and you put titles there and you put keywords in. For instance, if you have a waterfall and it's outdoors and you write um, business meeting as a keyword or something like that, that's irrelevant. So you have to make sure that um, your keywords are relevant and the title is relevant to the image. Uh, they don't want any images with, with watermarks. I mean, that goes without saying, obviously. So make sure there's no watermarks or timestamps on the images. And of course, model releases. We talked about that. Property releases. Um, you can see about form business releases, stuff like that. Um, and then we talked about tagging, incorrect tagging, uh, what it is. You know, if, if the image is nudity or R rated and you didn't tag it properly, it would get rejected. So you go through this, I'll have this link for this page also below. So check that out. Um, now for just another one, they have a lot of, all these places have a lot of help pages in, you know, submission guidelines and things like that. And on this page, we won't go into too much uh, detail. It gives you kind of step-by-step -step things to do to submit your first 10 images to um, Shutterstock. They like 10 images as your first submission. And they go through them. And they, they, get, they have all these little steps to go through to make sure that you're satisfying all their upload requirements. Now, the last site we're going to look at is Alamy. Um, this one's a slightly different than the other ones. Uh, kind of very, very easy, meaning whatever they sell it for, you get 50%. And um, it just works out. I guess it's a lot easier to figure out. Um, you know, it's a 50-50 split. This was back in the old days when I sold stock images. I mention this all the time. It was 50-50 split back then. And, you know, again, that doesn't mean, though, that this is any uh, less hard or harder to get your images accepted. You still have to have great images and... Um, you could download a PDF of quality control failure reasons why your images aren't being accepted or how to prevent your images from not being accepted, um, stuff like that. So uh, LMA is a little different. So you get 50% of the sale. Well, how much are the sales? Now, as we look up here, if we just want to look at, let's say, uh, let's do, let's say, a lifestyle category here. And of course, when I'm doing this, my computer internet seems to run a little slow. So let's look at the one here with uh, dad and his child. This is a nice image. And you can see a personal use. Someone's just going to, you know, put this on their website or something. Oh, no, websites even more. But they just want to use this for personal use. It's 20 bucks. So someone's going to buy this image. It's going to be $19.99. You're going to get half of that. Someone wants it for their website, $49.99. So these, you know, LMA probably won't have as many sales, but you do make more money per sale. Now, every month they publish picture needs, what they need. And let's look at uh, November of 2016. And you can see that they need um, key themes or events, gardening, general stock, and people. And again, they remind you that model property release content were relevant. Events, they want Melbourne Cup Horse Racing Carnival, the MTV Music Africa Awards, Spring and Winter Racing Carnivals, any Australian horse racing events, gardening, series of images showing lifting and dividing bearded iris, whatever that is, don't ask me, local flower shows such as Flora Day, Floria Day, whatever, and whatever, um, and so on. Now, you could go through. Uh, general stock, they want houses at night, need property release, modern maps, uh, so you can see the edges, old Chinatown, um, this place in Russia, um, snowy rooftops in Europe, no landmarks visible, so the real kind of a generic snowy land, uh, rooftop in Europe, 
And you could go through, now I'm not going to go through every single one of these here, it's beyond the scope of this video, but you get an idea, they pretty, they give you pretty much what they need, um, you know, uh, here's one, two teen boys trying on baseball caps in a shop or near to a baseball cap display, specific things they need. So, like I mentioned, they publish this every month, that gives you an idea what they need. Now, again, I'm going to mention that most people feel it's better to be on multiple agencies. So you have a thousand images to offer, have a thousand images on as many different agencies as you could handle. You'll make more money that way. Um, be even, even when uh, they're offering you more, 10% to a 30% incentive to be exclusive to them, you'll make more money having your images on more than one site. Now, if you don't have time to just deal with one site, um, which one would I use? Well, I'd probably use Alame only because I like those sales. That's the cheapest image is 20 bucks. And um, again, you won't make as many sales, but hopefully you'll make sales and you'll make 50% of the sales. Um, other than that, I mean, it's really comes to your professional choice, uh, what you like. I kind of like um, dreams times um, like uh, payment levels and how much you make. Uh, it's easy to move from level one to level two. You just have to sell an image. It's easy to move from level two to level three. You just have to sell four images and you're in level three. And level four, once you sell nine, you're in level four. And level five... Once you sell 24, you're in level five. So the, you really move up uh, through these different levels, uh, in my opinion, fairly easily. Now that's one thing I should mention. It's per image. So if you have a thousand images on Dreams Time and you sell one image 10 times, then you're in level four for that one image. If it doesn't, if you sell a different image, that's that image is on level one until it achieves these different goals. So each image is is different. It's going to be individual. But I kind of like it. I kind of like Dreams Time. So it's really up to you. I mean, what you like, and I couldn't tell you if one is more difficult to um, be a contributor to, meaning they're a little more stringent with their guidelines. Um, so I'm not really sure on that. It's really you know, try it. And, you know, maybe in the comments below, talk about what your experiences are with any of these or if there's any other um, these uh, stock photo sites that you like, um, you know, pass the uh, info, the intel off to everyone else. So that's it. I hope this was a nice overview of the different of some different stock photo sites and what you should expect to do if you want to sell your images that way. I'd like to thank everyone for watching all my videos. I really do appreciate it. In a couple weeks, we'll be doing another episode of the Photography Is My Passion podcast. If you have any suggestions what you'd like to cover, mention it below or email me and we'll see what we could do. All right. I'll talk to you guys soon.